Once again, turn the raised rim of the casting frame to the underside so that it won't be damaged by hammering. We can start separating the clay. A great advantage of the Delft casting clay is that your hands and tools don't get greasy. Make sure that all impurities are removed from the clay. In contrast to the previous mould, for this one we can compact the clay even more. Here we do not need to push the model halfway into the clay. When the clay has been well flattened, we can place the object. It is important that we push the model a little way into the clay so that we can easily see the contours later. The talcum powder being used to assist in the proper separation of the mould has no adverse effect on the quality of the clay. Make absolutely sure that the excess talcum powder does not gather in the recesses of the mould, which could cause loss of detail in the casting. Fit the frames together with index marks aligned. The second frame can now be filled with casting clay. The clay has been well compacted in the first frame and in the second it may be even more dense. The grains of sand will form such a solid mass that the model will leave a razor sharp imprint. The model must now be very carefully removed and we can see that it leaves a remarkably detailed copy. In the middle of the model impression, we can now prick a hole to mark where the pouring channel will be. Always prick the drill right through the clay and pull it out of the mould on the other side. In this way, we will avoid damaging the impression of the model.
Because this is a frequently made fault during sand casting, we will again show how the feeder should connect to the model cavity. You should always carve the funnel as deep as possible into the mould and at the narrow connection to the model cavity make the neck no less than 4 mm. If the clay has been pushed up during preparation of the feeder, cut away the excess. Carefully press the clay flat and make the opening sufficiently wide. We must also flatten all loose bits of clay in the funnel. It very often happens that while smoothing the clay in the funnel the impression will be disturbed. A ball punch can be used to push back the clay. You will notice that much attention is given to the funnel and pouring channel. This is necessary in order to have the best chance of a perfect casting. To check that the mould has not been deformed, we can also press in the model again, thus ensuring that the mould is as accurate as possible. When pouring, if the molten metal flows in at the middle of the mould, the air must leave at the sides of the model. We must therefore make several air vents at the edges. It is always better to make more small air vents than three or four larger ones. The reason for running the vents diagonally through the mould is to avoid entering the funnel. If this should happen, the molten metal will block off the air vents. The two halves of the mould can be fitted together again. It is now ready for casting.
when casting gold and silver we must realize that whenever the flame is taken off the metal it will cool very quickly therefore during pouring keep the flame on the metal Now we can open the mould and check the casting. We see that the mould has been completely filled with silver and that no pitting has occurred. If pitting has occurred, it is normally because the metal was too hot.